Congressman, thank you so much for being here this morning. You heard that sense of optimism from Senators Booker and Senator Scott. Do you share their optimism that something will get done on police reform? Yes, I do. Thank you very much for having me. You know, I, I keep talking with Karen Bass, uh, and she has assured me uh, that progress is being made, and I trust her explicitly. Uh, I'm not in the room, uh, but I'm very satisfied that things are moving along uh, very well. Then I want to ask you specifically about your Republican colleague, Tim Scott, from South Carolina. He is the one leading negotiations on the Republican side. Are you confident that if he cuts a deal, the rest of the Republican caucus will follow? I think so. Uh, I, uh, I think that Tim uh, is uh, negotiating on behalf of the Republican senators. Uh, I suspect uh, that he is in constant uh, communication with the leadership uh, of, the, uh, of the Senate, uh, Mitch McConnell more specifically. Uh, and I would suspect uh, that whatever uh, he decides to agree to, uh, it will be done uh, in concert. Uh, with the leadership of the Senate, and I think it will uh, well be compromised upon. The issue of whether to end qualified immunity for police officers seems to be this sort of key sticking point. If that's what it takes to get this bill through the Senate, would you be okay with leaving that debate aside for another day? Because while it might not get done in the Senate, we're actually seeing a lot of states address it already. Well, let me repeat what I said some weeks ago and seem to have been misunderstood. I do believe that a half loaf is better than no loaf at all. Now, what we sent to the Senate was what I consider to be the whole loaf on qualified immunity. That is to say, get rid of it. Now, uh, not to get rid of it would be no loaf at all. Uh, so a half loaf is somewhere in between. I would hope they would find some compromise on that. I have consulted Black Law Dictionary, a dictionary that you're very familiar with, and, and according to Black Law Dictionary, qualified means limited. That's the first word. And so uh, we seem to be interpreting qualified as being absolute. It doesn't mean absolute. So what I would hope that these negotiations will come up with a very good definition uh, for what qualified immunity is and that we can agree to something that both sides uh, will be relatively satisfied with. You never get all that you want, uh, but I would hope we will get something between no loaf uh, and the full loaf. Then let's talk about a half loaf in terms of infrastructure. A week ago, things were looking better. It sounded like discussions between Democrats and Republicans are going well. That seems to be slipping away. Where do you stand on infrastructure at this point? Half loaf, no loaf? Well, I, I suspect that the, the $2.2 trillion bill uh, that was first advanced uh, by uh, uh, President Biden uh, would be where I would love to see us. Now, this $600 billion bill that the senators first came up with, that's a non-starter. Now, I see the president's come back with like 1.7. Uh, they have come up to somewhere around six or $700 billion. I think we ought to get off of the numbers and start looking at the need. We know from our recent experiences that COVID-19 has exposed some real shortcomings in our infrastructure. Number one among them is broadband. Broadband is not a traditional infrastructure issue. And the Republicans cannot see that we need to have broadband in our schools if our kids are going to get adequately educated. We need to have broadband in our hospitals and our medical uh, facilities so that we can have telehealth and telemedicine. That is not a traditional broadband issue. And to me, it will be sinful uh, for us not to include a big broadband program in infrastructure. So when you start talking about numbers, I'm not there. Let's talk about what the needs are and then apply the numbers because the cost of not doing anything is tremendous, it's catastrophic. It is what will leave our children out of school for a second, maybe even a third year. And we cannot afford that. I know you're not tied to numbers, but if Democrats decide to go with this alone because Republicans won't play ball, would you sign on to the bill that President Biden has put forth right now, the $1.7 trillion one, all that's in there? You back that? 
Absolutely not because of the number, but because for what I know is in it. And one of the things that's in that is affordable, accessible broadband for all. That's what we need to do. And I think we ought to go at it alone. If the Republicans don't come on board, uh, I would hope uh, that Joe Manchin and others uh, will face the realities of what is happening here in South Carolina, rural South Carolina, rural West Virginia. I know a little bit about West Virginia, and I know full well that broadband is needed in West Virginia, uh, even maybe more so than we need it here in South Carolina. And so I think that roads and bridges are great. I think the ports, rails, fantastic. Airports, let's do what we need to do for them, but let's not leave the human element out of the infrastructure that we need. Our schools are crumbling, and we need infrastructure for our school buildings. We need infrastructure for housing. Housing, we've lost so much housing. Uh, back in 2008, 2009, we know what happened to black wealth. We need to now put in the infrastructure that will allow affordable housing to take place. And if you know, if you look at that tax bill, they keep talking about we are not doing anything with the tax bill. The tax bill, when it was dropped to 21 percent, uh, it destroyed affordable housing in this country. And we need to bring affordable housing back and we need to increase uh, to 28 percent on the tax structure. Uh, and I think that we ought to do something uh, about uh, elevating uh, the taxes on people uh, who are making more than three, uh, four, and five hundred thousand dollars a year? You haven't mentioned free pre-K and free community college. Are those two things that you think could wait for another day? No, no. <laughs> Our children. I think the president is right about that. Our children need to be starting school earlier, and they need to be staying in school longer. Uh, I'm a great believer that we ought not be uh, preparing people just uh, for a liberal arts education. I think that if someone wants to be uh, an electrician, uh, someone wants to be a plumber, and that's what they feel their life's vocations ought to be, we ought to help them get there. So this whole notion uh, that you got to be uh, a doctor, a lawyer, or a school teacher like I was in order to be successful, not. We cannot have school buildings without electricity, without plumbing, without carpeting. We need the skills of everybody, and we need to have a program that will put in the educational infrastructure so everybody can be successful.